So this is my MacBook Air M3 and what you can see on the screen right now is it throttling. And this is a common issue on the MacBook Airs because there's no active cooling, which means that once it gets hot, there's nothing you can do about it and it thermally throttles and the performance can go down quite a bit. What I've seen is in 10 minutes, I'm losing about 20 to 25% performance, but it can be as bad as 50% of performance. And in this video, I'm attempting to fix it. This video has been brought to you by LG and their OLED and Q unit TVs. Upgrade your home cinema experience through the links in the description below or learn more later on in this video. So in order to fix it we're gonna have to open up the laptop. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit of um, something underneath here so because when I'm peeling this off I can get something underneath there and there we go one clip two clips if you just go around it should just unclip them and then there's some in the middle as well. Uh, what comes helpful in this opening is an iFixit opening kit. So I'm just going to squish it in there. There we go. You just pull it towards the trackpad and then it comes off because you've got these little latches on the back. So let me explain what's going on here. We've got our trackpad on this side and here we have the motherboard, which is tiny. You've got some speakers on the side, I believe, on the top there. But this part here is the motherboard and the cooling as well, because there's a CPU in there and there's a little heatsink on the top. And that heatsink will be there. And as you can see underneath, there is nothing here that would actually take the heat from this heatsink out of the laptop. It's kind of just is all in there. So in order to fix it, all we have to do is find a thermal pad, something like that. I've got a few different thicknesses, so I'm going to figure out which one is the best thickness. 0.5, one millimeter and 1.5, I believe, millimeter thickness. And we want to lay them down here so that basically the heatsink of this CPU cooler and motherboard would make contact with this back plate, which would mean that the heat would just come onto the back plate and would be dissipated more, which means that it can run a little bit cooler. Now. The question is, why didn't Apple do that in the first place? The thing is, there is a law that all the laptop devices and all the devices that you have that you're using, they have to have certain surface temperature. So when you're putting them on your lap, they shouldn't go past certain temperature on the back of the you know, laptop. And that's why they're, they're not allowed to do this bit, which you can do. I don't think this is going to be an issue at all. And as far as I know, it's not going to void your warranty. So this here is 0.5 millimeters but i think we might have to go with one millimeter one as you can see it's just this part of there that we need to cover we have to peel off these stickers from both sides i'm going to leave these thermal pads in the description below if you want to check them out So what these thermal pads basically do is they just take the heat and then try to transfer it. They just soak the heat in and then transfer it hopefully to that back plate. So we're going to get better performance right there. I'm just going to put the leftover piece what I have here onto the other side. And these thermal pads aren't very expensive at all. Once you put these on, peel off the other side as well. And they are a little bit sticky. I'm just gonna squish them down. You can always remove them if any issues and when you send them back for Apple to repair if you need to or whatever, just open it up, take these off and you're all good to go. Now, thermal pads in there. There we go. This has gone round, clipped it in now. Let's put the screws back. And what I was worried about is if I see any bulging 
on the laptop cover because of that and that wouldn't look good and honestly it is absolutely flushly flat you can't see anything hey let's briefly talk about today's video sponsor lg and their oled tvs and why they are so special firstly lg's award-winning tvs aren't just slim and sleek the overall picture quality is second to none oled provides you the ultimate experience in color screen brightness and vibrancy whether in 4k or 8k the deep blacks and the crispy colors make any content stand out on the TV, including gaming. Secondly, LG offers various different sizes, designs and budgets to fit your environment and lifestyle. I'm going to leave three of my favorites in the description below. Lastly, a lot of LG TVs have Dolby Vision and Dolby Atomos support, meaning you'll get the best in class visuals and sound. And that's why you can see a lot of creators use LG OLED TVs as their main monitors. I'm only scratching the surface of what these TVs are capable of. Check out LG's TV lineup through the description below. Learn more about them and the three of my favorites. Thanks LG for sponsoring this part of the video. Firstly, let me try one multi-core CPU test and let's see how this reacts here now. We can see that the package is pulling 17, 18 watts. The core temperatures are slowly getting higher and we'll see how the wattage and all of this starts to react now to the results here. Our core average is 103, 104 degrees. But interestingly, it's not pulling the power down quite yet. Ooh, and I can feel the bottom is getting warm. Now the thermal throttling with MacBook Airs is especially bad when they are in a clamshell mode, which means let's say you've got a dock or something like that. You come to your office, you plug your laptop in and then let it just sit in there like that. And by being like that, you're not actually letting any of the heat dissipate from the keyboard. It's only gonna be dissipated from the back. And right now we've just improved the back performance in there so it gets it cooler now you can see that the package is slightly going down towards 17 and 16 so if you are using your macbook in a dock situation or where you're putting it like that somewhere and you're editing and working on it maybe using this to edit photos or something like that then it would be especially good to have the thermal pad in the back so that your performance will be cooled down a little bit better all it's going to do is basically let the device run cooler and you can see even slowly when i've lifted the laptop here and touched the bottom can you see how the wattage is actually going slightly higher over there just because it cools it even better right now i'm just leaving it on the floor like that and you can, as you can see here again went slightly higher on this bit because i was just feeling what it's like on the bottom there you can see correlation of here a little bit higher clock speeds here and there on the graphs okay as you can see our test is complete and even at the end of the test we were pulling close to 15 watts in there now i have actually done a test of running this cpu multi-call for 10 minutes earlier and i've screen recorded it now what i want to do is i'm going to do the same let it record this for 10 minutes to see what it's like in the end and we're going to compare the temperature differences as well as the score differences to see if this mod actually worked 10 minutes start bear in mind this laptop is already preheated i just completed the test so it's already kind of warmish so we're just loading another 10 minutes onto it which is probably a little bit of a worse of a case than my previous test where maybe i did it once but the laptop wasn't so heated up but the conditions are very very similar but i'm curious how much is this seven dollar little thermal pad going to make a difference on this performance. So as you can see, we've completed the 10 minute throttle test now, and it was interesting comparing these side by side so you can really see the thermal pad option actually keeping the clock speeds and wattages much higher. You can see we ended around 12 watts still in there, whereas without the thermal pad, we were already below 10, like 7, 8 watts or something like that. And now look at the score, 591 in 10 minutes. That is losing a little bit of performance, but not much at all. Compared to the 27% that we lost with 
without the thermal pad. Now in my testing right now, I have gained extra 10% performance in 10 minutes of throttling this. And you can also see the clamshell mode in the 10 minutes as well. Bear in mind right now, I have the room a little bit hotter than in the previous test, but I don't have room control environment. And the worst case, what I've seen online is up to 50% of performance decrease. But now with this $7 fix, we're getting much better performance. Now, if you're asking me, is it worth it? I definitely think it is. And here's how you can do it. One important thing to notice is that if you go in with the M2 or M3 devices, they have a different chassis, whether 15 inch or 13 inch. And I'd recommend using one millimeter thermal pad. If you go in with the older version M1, then you might want to get a little bit more or a little bit less get a few ones. I'll leave the different thicknesses on Amazon. You can pile them on top of each other as well if you wanted to. It's going to work exactly the same. When you're using some this for the older M1 chassis, then it might be a little bit different just because of the, the way the chassis is designed. So there might be a little bit more room. So bear that in mind when doing yours. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.